This is the third video in the user specified statistics module and the second video that deals with observational statistics or tally statistics in SIMEO terminology. And in the last video we learned or uh, I, I, I discussed the fact that the way that makes sense for me to think about tally statistics is using this bucket analogy. Where we think about having a bucket that Simeo calls a tally and we periodically throw observations into this bucket. And so these observations at the end are treated as a population and then analyzed and Simeo will compute descriptive statistics uh, on that population. And so the process we use is basically this three-step process uh, listed right here we essentially create the bucket, which is create a tally statistic. Then we compute or tabulate or observe, depending on what you're doing, the individual observations. And then we toss those observations into the bucket. And in that video, we uh, implemented the standard SIMEO statistics, or we replicated the standard SIMEO statistics for time that an entity spends in the system. So by default, when you use uh, a, an uh, model entity instance, like the default entity that you use uh, by default, Simeo collects uh, this time and system statistics, among other statistics, for you automatically. It just assumes that if you have an instance, a model entity instance, that you're going to want to collect information about that population. Similarly, when you place a sync, uh, Simeo also computes time and system statistics on all of the entities that go through that sync. So if you have multiple entity instances, like maybe in this example, I might have different types of boards, uh, the sync statistic would be for all of the, or the population of entities that go through that sync. And so all of these things are computed for you automatically. And if that's all you're interested in, there would be, of course, no need to replicate that as we did in the previous video. We just did that replication for instructive uh, purposes. But suppose that we want to collect information about something that's model specific, in which case Simeo has no way to know that you might want to collect that statistic. So if you think about our circuit board placement process, uh, for example, suppose I wanted to track for each board how many times the board goes through the placement process. And so if you recall how our process works is as is a board arrives, uh, it has the components placed, goes through an inspection, and then we have one of three outcomes. Either it's rejected as bad, it's accepted as good, in which case it leaves the system, and it would have gone through placement one time or it goes through a rework process where the components are stripped off and it returns to placement. So in the case where it goes through rework, then it would be going through the placement process a second time and possibly a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time since we don't limit in any way the number of times that a board could go through uh, this rework process. So if we wanted to track that for each entity, how many times does it go through the placement process, we would have to create a, a user specified statistic to do this because Simeo has no way to know that that's something that we're interested in tracking. So let's see how we would approach uh, this task. So if we go back to our um, uh, observational statistic description, clearly this is an observational statistic. For each board, we are creating an observation of how many times that board went through placement. So we are creating these independent observations of how many times the board goes through placement, and we're tossing those into our, our tally bucket, and Simeo then is reporting on those values. So we could report on the average or the maximum or something like that. And so we have an observational statistic. We're going to follow this same three-step process that we defined earlier, where the first step is to create the bucket. The second step is to compute the observations. The third step is to toss them into the bucket. So let's go back to our model and do the, the, those three steps. So I'm going to go to definition, elements, and as we did before, I'm going to create a tally statistic. I'm going to call this tally, tally statistic number in UMBER of placements. And so back to our process, we've just gone through this uh, step one of creating the bucket. And this time, our bucket is named number of placements. And so in our model, uh, you can see that we now have two different buckets, one for number and system and one for number of placements. So before we go on, I'm going to fix a minor inconsistency that I introduced in the last video, unfortunately. The first tally, we were actually tallying the time entity spent in the system, but I inadvertently named it 
numbering system. So I'm just going to go back into the bucket or the tally statistic and change that uh, to time and system. And as I mentioned before, if I go back to the tally steps where this is used, you can see that Simeo has updated all of the usage uh, for that. So sorry about that, that I had inadvertently had the oops, inadvertently had that um, uh, the wrong name here. But so now we have our two buckets. We have our time and system bucket and our number uh, of placements buckets. And so we go back to our process and we say the second step for our tally statistic is to compute or tabulate the individual observations. And so in our model, what we're trying to uh, observe is the number of time a board goes through placement. And so what we need to do that is we need to create a counter associated with each entity so that we can record every time it goes through placement. So I'm going to go back to my model entity and create that counter, which is an entity state. So go back to model entity, state, and this time in, instead of the, the um, oops, I did two there, uh, instead of the real uh, entity statistic, we have an integer statistic. And let's just call this num place. And so now we have an entity state called num place with an initial state value of zero. So I'm going to go back to my model and just for uh, verification to make sure that I'm doing this uh, correctly, I'm going to add, go to my default entity and add a status label. And my status label is going to display the number of times that this particular entity or the entity run space has been through placement. So you can see it's already attached to default entity and this is going to be num place, the state that uh, we just defined. And so you can see here before I run it's set to a value of zero because that's the default value. So now when I run, arriving boards have a value of zero because they haven't gone through placement. And they still have a value of zero because we haven't incremented that value. So what we have is we've created the holding point or the holding place, the variable. Uh, and now we need to go through the second step of incrementing that. Turns out that's pretty simple in this case. We simply go to the placement object and go to the state assignments. And after processing or before exiting either one of these, they'll be roughly the same time, I'm going to simply add the state assignment. So I'm going to model entity, num place, and then model entity, num place, plus one. And so I simply increment the value once the entity is finished processing. And so now when I run, we should see that number changing from 0 to 1 when the entities leave. And so we see that. And for the entities that go through multiple times, like the one that you saw right there, it has a value of 2, indicating that we are uh, calculate, um, uh, tabulating that value every time the entity goes through the placement, which is exactly what we're trying to do. Okay, so now we've done the first two steps. We've created the bucket, uh, the tally statistic called number of placements. We've computed the uh, individual observations by creating an entity state called num place and then incrementing that value every time the board goes through placement. And we have the third uh, task or the third step left where we toss the observations into the bucket. And so as before, there are two basic ways we could do this. First, we could use the tally statistic um, property set uh, associated with the input nodes to both good and bad sync. But for this case, we already have the add-on process where we recorded the time and system statistics, so we'll simply use, you know, we'll simply piggyback onto that process. So I'm going to go to the process, and here's the tally statistic that does the, uh, the time and system. I'm simply going to add another tally step, and this time the tally that I want to uh, or the bucket that I'm going to toss an observation into is the number of placements and the value is the model entity num place. And so now I have the values recorded and here I toss those into our bucket. And so when I run my model, let's go back here and run in fast forward mode and then jump to our results. You can see that we have another user-defined statistic called number of placements, which has the average max, maximum value. Note also that we could use the tally statistic as we did in our experiment responses before. So this time, let's go add a response 
for average num place. And just we get the average value for number of placements. So this is number of placements average. And let's also add a maximum just so we can see how to, oops, I don't want to run right yet. So I'm going to go and just add one more response. And this time I want to do the maximum. Max num place. And so I'm just I'm just reporting a different descriptive statistic from that tally. Num placements maximum. And when we run our model, we can see that we have that same average value that we saw, and then we also have the maximum number of placements. Again, this is an average over our 10 replications. If we want to see the individual values, one way to do that is I go to the response results. I have a small number, so I can see what, at least the individual buckets. I guess I can't see the actual values. I have five here, six here, and seven here. These are uh, discrete values, and so it only becomes continuous uh, when I take the average over all of the replications. So again, let's summarize what we did here. So back to our uh, process here, we created the time bucket, we then computed the values, and then we used an add-on process, an existing add-on process, to toss the observations into the bucket. So in both of these two observational statistics, we followed the exact same process the only difference was in this step two where we actually computed the value. In one case, we wanted the time in system, and in another case, we wanted the number of times the board went through placement.